Welcome to Straight Out of Scriptures. I'm so excited to have you here today. If you've been watching, I want to say thank you so much. If this is your first time on this channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button, um, press the notification bell, just generally engage with this channel by commenting, by sharing, by telling your friends even about this. Uh, thank you so much again. Thank you for being here. Today I have a very exciting topic to speak about. Should a Christian take alcohol? What does the Bible say about this? What does the scripture say about this? I want to look at Bible truth concerning these. Don't forget this is straight out of scriptures where we tell biblical truth and give scriptural perspective to today's issue. Thank you. Don't touch that thing. Don't touch it. Don't change it. Have a right back. All right. Welcome back to Straight Out of Scriptures. <laughs> Today is awesome. I was looking at should a Christian drink alcohol? Is it acceptable? Uh, should you take alcohol, fermented drink? Uh, should you take strong wine? What does the Bible say about this? I'm not sure there is a question that has divided Christians over the past decade like the question of alcohol. Why? Because many people just hold doggedly to whatever it is they believe. If you believe it is yes, they just say yes. Uh, and they hold doggedly to that truth. And for those who say no, they hold doggedly again to that truth. To be sure, alcohol, beer, and wine are strong substance. Uh, some people like to call them drugs. Some people call them drugs. Some people call them wine. Whatever you call it. Some people just, just say, okay, it's just a substance. Whatever you call it, uh, I would like to let, let you know that it's a very strong substance. Uh, it's very addictive. Um, it has strong and strange power. Its law is crazy. I mean, if you look at them pour wine, it's enticing by itself. <laughs> if you have ever seen them pour a red wine in a glass, it's, 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 it's enticing. It, it looks good. Uh, and uh, therefore, when you see adverts as it concerns these things in our culture, and in the, today's world, you see that it's, it's wrong when they do alcohol, um, adverts, beer. Uh, it's, it's, it's connected with strong masculinity upwardly mobile people um they, they attach it to sources they attach it to freedom to liberty to dreams uh, and to just enjoying your life are these things true or are these things just psychological things um, um they used to drive us now so should we drink alcohol or should we not drink alcohol they legally say no no don't grace people say yes jesus has died for you on the cross baby you can do all things uh, because Jesus died and your spirit is saved, it doesn't matter what you do with your body. I legally say, no, you can't. Don't touch that thing. If you touch that thing, you're going on the highway to hell. But today, we want to pause for a moment and see what God's word says concerning this. It's SOS telling biblical truth and giving scriptural perspective. Let's begin by defining two terms and seeing what scripture says about drinking alcohol and being drunk. No, those are two terms that will help us to navigate. Uh, this subject as it concerns what God's word is and what God really is saying. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, let me know what your thought is as I continue and as I go on. Drinking. This may shock you. There's no place in scriptures where drinking is outrightly banned or prohibited. There's no place in scriptures. In fact, from pages of scriptures, it seems drinking is permitted. In fact, we can explain this uh, with three key events, even in the New Testament. Because I know folks will tell me, you know, you're just quoting from Old Testament. Okay, we are New Testament believers. All right, New Testament. The first one is the wedding at Cana in Galilee. In fact, it's said that the first miracle Jesus did, John chapter 2, Scripture says, and this was the beginning of his mir of the miracles uh, that Jesus did, uh, and that to find in John 2, 1 to 11. And the first miracle was to turn water to wine, water to wine. Now, some folks have come and said, you know, that wine is not alcoholic. Uh, that you might, the process of chemists turning, uh, uh, turning things to alcohol and all of that, uh, that, same, that whole process may not have started at the time Jesus lived, that may be true. But that there were strong drinks and fermented drinks through natural processes at that time uh, is also beyond doubt. All right. So, what kind of drink? I believe it is strong drink. Number two, at uh, the Last Supper, Matthew 26 17 to 19, uh, they took wine and then they took bread. And Jesus said, Take this wine, this is my blood. Uh, it's shared even for your sins. All right. And then you read 1 Corinthians 11, 20, 21. Somebody is saying, are you telling me that even on the Last Supper, the wine they took is, is alcoholic? Uh, it, I, I'm not going to use the word alcoholic. It's fermented and strong wine. 
Uh, the answer is yes. Why? How do I know? In the early church, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, scripture says they began to take wine and they began to take the Lord's Supper because Jesus commanded that they should do that in remembrance of him. And Paul was writing to the Christians at Corinth and this was what he said. I, I would like to read to you 1 Corinthians 11, 20-22. Bible says, when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. For as you eat, each of you goes ahead without waiting for anybody else. One remains hungry, another gets drunk. Can you see that? Another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? Certainly not. So, some people actually just come and then they eat a lot and then they also drink a lot till they get drunk. Do you understand that? Now, Paul also in his letter to Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23, he says, Stop drinking only water use a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent illness now science has told us that it is good um, that if you take um, red wine especially it helps the guts uh, that means um, strong wine helps the guts that means your digestive system it helps you so it really helps the stomach to be able to digest things now it doesn't mean you have to take it daily and on a regular basis that it just take it once in a while helps that happen now even today in israel wine strong wine is still used at kiddush and avdala on sabbath and jewish holidays they still take it at kiddush and avdala on shabbat and jewish holidays so they take it for the cup of prayer that means they take the cup and then they pray also at chupa that is under the wedding canopy on that when they are getting married they take the wine and then they bless the cup of the wine just uh, as they take it another thing at pidion haben the redemption of a firstborn son and even at the passover so you can see that the wine is used by god and by his people and even god's people for certain things uh, scriptures i'll give you other scriptures psalm 104 14 to 15 the bible says it makes grass grow for the cattle and plant for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the heart, wine that gladdens human heart, oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. Psalms 104, 14 to 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 7 says, Go, eat your food with gladness, and drink your wine with a joyful heart, for God has already approved what you do. Isaiah 62, 8 to 9. The Bible says, The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, Never again will I give you grain as food for your enemies and never again will foreigners drink the new wine for which you have toiled but those who harvest it will eat it and praise the lord and those who gather the grapes will drink it in the cup of my sanctuary you see that so it's it's there in scriptures it's there in scriptures wine is there in scriptures so people take wine in scriptures it is there except we are not reading the scriptures fully except we are failing to understand the tenet of scriptures but then i must emphasize this as i move on here there is more scripture objectively and and, and don't run away because you have the first part don't take the first part and run away I, i'm here to tell you that there are more scripture objectively condemning the use of alcoholic beverages uh, than you will find on the subject of lying adultery swearing cheating hypocrisy and even blaspheming there is more scriptures against uh, condemning the use now emphasize the use of alcoholic beverages there are more scriptures against it than you find against lying against swearing against cheating hypocrisy pride or even blaspheming lying or adultery there are more scriptures the use is the most important thing which many people links to the second word you know i said first of all being drunk and then drinking the first one is drunkenness the bible frowns against drunkenness bible says in galatians chapter 5 verse 21 and envy drunkenness orgies and the like i warn you as i did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of god that means those who give our life to drunkenness will not inherit the kingdom of god bible says peter speaking in first Peter chapter 4 verse 3 he said for you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do what do pagans choose to do he said living in debauchery lost drunkenness orgies carousing and detestable idolatry can you see that these are the things pagans choose to do these are the things pagans do themselves and i love paul again romans chapter 13 verse 13 he said let us behave decently as in the daytime not in carousing 
and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1, the writer of Proverbs, what the Jewish people like to call one of the solid books of wisdom. Bible says wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. Can you see that? Wine is a mocker and be a brawler. So, okay, so scripture says, scripture does not really tell you if you do this thing, you're going to go to hell. But here is scripture telling you that don't be subject to this substance because wine is a mocker and be a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. Uh, that's the way the New International Version put it. The King James says, he who is led by them is foolish. So, we must understand this. Oh, let's look at certain events caused by the impact of the misuse of alcohol or strong or fermented wine in scriptures. And that's why we have to be careful. Oh, so you can drink. Oh, you can take you can take one cup. You can take two cups. You can Oh, you can. But that doesn't mean you are a sinner. That doesn't mean you're going to hellfire. That doesn't mean so according to scriptures. But listen to this. There are you should not be subjected to this substance. That's also clear from scriptures. Now, oh, let's look at certain events and I, and I'm saying that now. Number 1, uh, I'll just, I think I'll just give you about four events from scriptures. L- what it cost, the, the, the taking of alcohol, fermented drink, what did it cost? Noah became drunk, the result was immorality and family trouble. And you find that in Genesis chapter 9, 20 to 26. After God had destroyed the world, the Bible says Noah planted a vine and then he took of the wine and he became drunk. And scripture says one of his sons came and saw his nakedness. Uh, some people have said that there was, it's not just seeing the nakedness. Uh, some Bible scholars say, no, if you look at the cause and what happened afterwards, he was not just seeing nakedness. Uh, he, he actually had an affair. He actually just slept uh, even with Noah. He, had an, uh, he took advantage of him. How did did Noah get to this stage? How did a man who found favor in God's sight, who was righteous, how did he get to this stage? He got to this stage because he was drunk. You need to understand that. That's an event. Number two, another event. Lot was so drunk, he also, Genesis 19, 30 to 38. Lot was so drunk, he did not know what he's do- he was doing and he slept with his two daughters. Immorality. He slept with two daughters. The Bible says, they said, let's get him drunk. And they slept with you. So they knew what would happen. The daughters knew what would happen if a man get drunk. It's not only the daughters. Even the devil knows what will happen if people get drunk. And that was what the King David also wanted to do. After he had slept, he wanted to cover his own, uh, slept with another man's wife. He wanted to cover his back and the, the, the woman had already gotten, uh, gotten pregnant. He, he, he called the man and decided, I'm going to make him drunk so that he can go home. But he didn't do that. Even despite the fact that he was drunk, he still had the sense. But the devil knows. People know that when a man gets drunk, he loses his objectivity. He loses the ability to make wise decisions. All right. The Bible also speaks concerning in 1 Samuel 25, and you begin to read 1 Samuel 25, it's really 36 38. The Bible spoke about a, about a man called Nabal, a rich man, but he was a childish man who opposed David and died at the end of a drunken spree. He died at the end of a drunken spree. Now, that is not just something that happened at that time. I, I saw a video recently about somebody in South Africa who took uh, uh, alcohol, who took a whole bottle of hot, of hot, uh, what you call hot drink. He, he took one, uh, maybe above 50%, that's what they call them, and then he just took a whole bottle and downed it at once. I mean, he, he, he finished it at once and they were celebrating him, celebrating the guy. Oh, you took a whole, a whole bottle of whiskey, you finished it at once. I mean, this is more than 60% uh, alcohol and he took it at once. Uh, and then they were celebrating him, he won the thing. Hours later, hours later, the guy died. And what happened? That because the liver could not process what he took and then he died. You see, you need to understand these things. It leads to death. And I, apart from that, I've seen folks who, who take it and now they have diabetes. Because one of the things they will not tell you is that before you, those beers have a lot of what is called, um, of, what, of what you call, uh, of, of a lot of sugar. A lot of, a lot of refined sugar is in what you're taking. A lot of refined sugar and it leads to diabetes. You, therefore, you see many people who are, who are beer gossers, you see them also fighting diabetes and all of that because there's a lot of sugar in it. I, people say ah, Coca-Cola has a lot of sugar, but they do not know also that this one also con- contains 
lots and loads of sugar. Esther, the Bible says in Esther chapter 1, 5 to 22, the Bible says concerning a king called Ahasuerus, the king was drunk after a drinking spree. He said, no, bring my wife out. Now, you need to understand that those days, the kind of parties they had was not, was not okay. It's a lot of sexuality. It's a lot of, uh, it, it, it's just not okay. To you to now want to bring a queen out. And that was why the queen said, I'm not coming out. Because the queen understood that you are not just, these people will just look at me and then they will just be laughing and all of that. And the queen decided it wasn't coming. But what led the king to this was because the queen, the king was because the king was drunk and it led to separation how many families have been wrecked how many people's lives have been wrecked how many homes have been separated because of drinking because of husbands who are drunkards who are addicted to drinking who made bad decisions because they are drunk how many homes have been torn into houses of sorrow because a drinkard have gone ahead and killed uh, via accidents car accidents uh, their child how many so you can see i can drink you can say that but the problem is not drunkenness the problem is intoxication the problem is being intoxicated and, and, and then you can also answer me and say, you see now, I can drink, but I can drink wisely. I can drink with sense. Oh, before you come to that decision, can I ask you two questions? And, and these two questions are, are important. How much is too much? Okay, so scripture says we can, you can drink and we find that in scriptures. But how much is too much of drink? How much is too much of alcohol? One ounce uh, can get some people dr- can get some people intoxicated. Um, one cup can get some people intoxicated, depending on their body. So, how do you define how much is how much? And how do you know when you cross the line? And I think these are very important questions that we need to answer. Very quickly, I want to just wrap this up by telling you what we can deduce from scriptures. From the scriptures I've given, what can we deduce? What does scripture say? Having read the whole body of scriptures, I cannot give you all the verses because it's a lot of verses uh, about, about, about alcohol. But I can give you what we can deduce from the summation of these scriptures. Don't forget this is straight out of scriptures. Don't forget to comment and share and just press the subscribe button if you are here for the first time. But the first thing I can say is that from scriptures, abstinence is best. In fact, kings priests leaders are admonished not to take wine in fact in old testament times priests were actually commanded not to take wine you find that in leviticus chapter 10 verse 9 to 11 bible says you and your sons are not to drink wine or other fermented drink whenever you go to the tent of meeting or you will die so god was saying you are a priest you cannot if you are coming to the tent of meeting, you cannot afford it because if you do it and you misbehave because you are drunk, you are going to die. You are going to offer strange sacrifices and you are going to die. This is a lasting ordinance for generations to come. Verse 10 says, so that you can distinguish between the, between the holy and the common, between the unclean and the clean. And verse 11, so you can see the Israelite or the decrees that the Lord has given them through Moses. How can you define what is holy and unholy? When everyone drinks and everyone is a drinker, how can we say this is dedicated to God? How can you as a believer challenge the world when you do these things? And I love the letter and I love the words of of Lemuel's mother to to, to the words that Lemuel's mother gave to her. Proverbs 31, 4 to 7. He said it is not for kings, Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing. I mean, when I see that, I say to myself, I cannot drink. <laughs> Why would you want to drink? Say, let beer be for those who are perishing. Why for those who are in anguish? Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their mystery no more. Now, it seems like Lemuel mother was saying, let these things be for those who are hopeless. Let it be for those who are dejected. Let it be for those who have given up on life. But for you, O king, for you, O king, for you, O king, don't do it. Don't forget that when we say kings now, in the New Testament times, you and I have become kings and priests with God. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 
5. Scripture makes it abundantly clear that he has made us priests and kings to our God. We say we are kings and we are priests. You need to understand this truth. Therefore, as priests and as kings of God, there are certain things that are not allowed. They are not permitted. If you are going to live a life that is worthy, you cannot do these things. Number two, what they are find from scriptures that you must be careful how you use alcohol. Okay, so I said it in Israel today, they still take it. But do you understand, do you all know that even though Israel and the Jewish nation, uh, they still use it for uh, at ceremonies, like I started with telling you that they use it at wedding ceremony, at Passover, uh, at, at, the, at the redemption of the first child son, they, they take the glad the cup. And even the rabbis consider wine and the cup of wine as one of the greatest gifts God has given men. So there is a special prayer for the cup of wine. It's okay. Though they do that, but do you know that the nation of Israel has the lowest problem of drinkers in the whole of the world. One of the lowest. One of the lowest. And they didn't have to make it a law, like some nations have to, have to uh, and start saying, if you drink alcohol, we'll cut your hand, cut your... No, they didn't have to do that. Because they were taught. You see, understanding appropriately what scripture says uh, will ensure that you do everything the way the scripture commands it and nothing will destroy you nothing will destroy you and you find that there i find that in proverbs 20 verse 1 wine is a mocker and be a brawler whoever is led by them is not wise and then what do i see again number three that drinking may be permissible but it is not beneficial looking at the code that paul gave to us in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 12 first corinthians chapter 10 verse 23 he said i have the right to do anything you say but not everything is beneficial i have the right to do anything he said, but I will not be mastered by anything. I think those two words are quite key. First one is that not everything is beneficial. And number two, that you will not be mastered by anything. We, beer, wine, alcohol, it can lead to addiction. And addiction means that you are now mastered by that sin. And you see that Paul said, I will not be mastered by anything. And then he said, is it beneficial? And it's important to understand, I have not seen any benefits in drinking. Therefore, I've not seen anything I'm losing by not drinking. Believers should not let the world lie to them, marketers lie to them, or, 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 or sensationalism or social media lie to them. You are not missing out on anything. I remember when I was serving, I, I went somewhere and then I asked for malt. And, and the lady and, and the team of people that were with me, the lady and another guy, and they asked for beer. And I said, give me, give me, give me, give me, just give me a bottle of malt, non-alcoholic beverage. And they looked at me and said, you know, you are just missing out. You, you are not cool. Uh, you, you are not in vogue. You, you, you're, not, you, you're not enjoying life. And I looked at them and I said, I'm enjoying life. I'm taking this thing and it is cool for me and I'm enjoying it. You are not having more fun than I'm having because I'm not drinking at all. Don't let the world lie to you. The, the world lies to many believers and it's not fine. I can't see any benefit again, I repeat, in drinking. If you have any benefit, you can put it on the comment. But I have not seen. In fact, there are many negatives. 50% of accidents on American roads are caused by drunken drivers. They are caused by drunkenness. Many families, many homes have been wrecked because of that. Ill health comes after it. I know people who are struggling with their health now because of, they were drinking. I remember a young man came to me many, many years ago and he was telling me, I need to be free from this thing. He said, now it's affecting my liver. I'm about to, I'm going to die if I don't stop this. Why? Because he had become addicted even to alcohol. Number four, drinking can affect your choices and your decisions. I found the scriptures again that drinking can affect your choices and your decisions. Sexual immorality, like the case, uh, like the case of, of Noah uh, that we read, uh, like the case of um, Nabal that we read. Sexual immorality, like the case that we found in scriptures of Noah uh, and um, again of Lot, you find that also in scriptures. All right, it can also call rape cause rape and assault. All you need to do is to press drunkenness and rape and assault on, 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 on Google and you will be surprised and amazed at the statistics you are going to find. It also leads to a lot of poverty. It leads to poverty. Uh, it leads to poverty. A lot of finances have been ruined because lives have been damaged. The finances they were supposed to build, they use it buying alcohol. Those drinks are not cheap. They are quite expensive. Quite expensive. Uh, and dollar, a lot of dollars is involved, a lot of naira is involved, and you're asking yourself, why are you doing this? Number five, that nobody, I find the scriptures that nobody will go to hell because they drink or, or by their drinking. They will not go to hell. 
but their actions while drunk may cause them to go to hell i think we need to underline that okay so drinking in itself by itself may will not lead to hell i've not found that scripture but your actions while drunk may lead you to sin which will also cause you to go to hell number six be careful not to condemn yourself by the things you approve because you your conduct can cause someone else who is weak to stumble for instance you say i'm, I'm under grace i'm not under the law and then you begin to drink now somebody is with you who also who has a family of a lineage where people are addicted uh, to, to drinking alcohol and the person is, uh, has family line who struggle, who are struggling and all that. And because you are drinking, the person also looks at you and starts drinking. Before you know it, the person also starts becoming addicted. Because though know, you may have power to be able to hold on, the person may not have that power. Pro Romans chapter 14, 22, 23 says, So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is he who does not condemn himself by those things which he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they hit, because their eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 15, Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbors, pouring it from the white skin till they are drunk so that he can gaze on their naked bodies. Woe to him who give drink to his neighbor, spoiling it from their white skin till they are drunk. Galatians 5 verse 13, You, my brothers and sisters who are called to be free, do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Though you have freedom, be careful how you use it. And finally, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I think that is very key. And your body must be kept clean and you must keep your body strong and healthy because this is the place where god's spirit dwells i tell folks that whatever substance you are putting in your body is a lack of respect that substance can kill or destroy your body or affect your body to be healthy and agile if it's going to cause you and it's going to stop you from being agile and being healthy and you are using that substance is wrong because that body is not your own according to scriptures new testament believers you know this that their body is the temple of the holy spirit and therefore they must be careful what they put into it first corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 don't you know that you yourselves are god's temple and that god's spirit dwells in you he said the same thing in first corinthians chapter caesar and then verse 19 personally i have not yet taken my first beer and I have no desire to take it at any time soon. I don't indulge and I don't judge people. I don't, I don't, I don't judge people. I don't tell people that they are hand bound who take, who take it. Uh, uh, why? Uh, because I've seen it in scriptures that they may not be hell bound. But I have come to the realization I do not believe that it is the right choice. I do not believe that drinking is the right choice. You might say it's fine, you have freedom, you want but I do not believe that is the right choice, it's the best choice, and it is the awesome choice for a believer who has the Spirit of God. I think the main question should not be should a believer, I, 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 don't, I don't believe that the main question should be can a believer drink? I think the main question should be should a believer drink? I don't think it's wise. I don't think it is the thing to do. I don't think that it is scriptural to continue drinking it because like I asked those two questions when do you know when you have crossed the line? Uh, that's number one. Number two, what is enough? How do you know what is enough? I think those two questions are there and you can keep ruminating on it. But that's what the scripture says and I believe I've answered that question. So this is straight out of scriptures. Don't forget if you have any question, you might be the question we are asking. It might be your question we are ask, answering the next time we are here on this episode. And what is the email to, to send your questions to? PFA Speaks. PFA speaks at gmail.com. Maybe today's episode and you just want clarification, you can please send it in. I'll be sure to answer you. Thank you so much for joining. I'm sure you're going to have a fantastic day. Thank you. If you have not subscribed to this channel, don't forget subscribe, press the notification button, share, and generally engage. Let somebody know what's going on. Tell your friend about this channel. And I'm so blessed having you. Have a fantastic day. And I love you. Thank you so much.